Hey guys and welcome to Transit Custom Camper Conversion. In the video today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 mistakes that I made on my DIY custom camper conversion. So you don't have to. So just before the top 10 countdown, I first want to get up to a new section of the channel called Reader's Vans. So in this section, I want to be featuring some of the DIY conversions that I know some of the followers of, of the channel have made, because I thought it'd be great to share what we're doing on our vans and share experiences along the way. The van I'm going to feature today is by one of our long-term subscribers, Angela. So Angela has pretty much been doing the conversion alongside the conversion that I've been going through personally on, on my van as well. So see from some of the pictures, um, obviously Angela and I think her husband have done an amazing job. So just say thanks to Angela for um, sharing your great pictures of the van. So if you've got a van that you want to feature on the channel, leave a comment below and also give us a quick like and a subscribe and I'll show you how you can get some pictures sent over to the channel and get your van featured on our next readers vans now let's get on with the list first mistake i made was physically cutting the holes in my van so as you go through the process you're potentially going to want to cut holes for your 240 volt outlet maybe the um, hole for your um, vent for your gas where your um, gas bottles are going to be stored and also potentially roof vents as well what i did wasn't quite sure on the plan for the van before i started i'd already insulated and started to carpet my panels and i suddenly realized that i then needed to cut my holes for my 240 volt hookup that wasn't too much of a problem for me managed to sort that out but yeah top mistake plan ahead before you cut your holes. Number two on the list was when it came to actually fitting the ply floor. So there's different options for fitting your ply floor. The option that I decided to go for was to drill through the ply floor directly into the metal ribs of the van. Nothing wrong with that, but I think in hindsight, what I would have done is put some ply wood in between the ribs of the van itself so these would act as like batons and then i'd screw directly into into the batons as well so that was one kind of learning not really a mistake just a different approach however the other thing that was a mistake was right in the center of the the van in the transit custom there are some quite big gaps where there's no sort of ribs and what i omitted to do was to fully pack that out with some plywood so i could make sure the floor was a hundred percent level when it actually came to putting in my altro flooring there was a slight gap in between the two um, levels of the floor which was a little bit disappointing it's not worked out too bad because the position of the the rock and roll bed actually comes just where that joint is so you can't see it but for my ocd that was a little bit annoying when i was i was laying the floor there's also gaps near the sliding door i did pack those out with some some plywood but just a mistake i made was forgetting to put that packing in the middle between the floor joint Mistake number three then was when it came to actually carpeting the, the rear doors. So initially when I started, I wasn't 100% sure whereabouts you have to carpet the actual rear doors itself. So my Transit Custom has got barn doors. What I did, I um, carpeted all the way around the edges of the door initially. And then when I posted that video to YouTube, I had a couple of comments, people saying, your carpet's going to get really wet because the carpet has actually gone beyond the rubber seal of the door. Top tip, I guess, and a mistake that I made that hopefully you won't, is if you are deciding to, to carpet round your, your rear barn doors, carpet them first and then just go slightly beyond where the, the rubber seal is on the door. And then you can scribe and then cut down that rubber seal round the side of the door so you can make sure you've got a seal completely in, intact and you're not gonna get any wet carpet because nobody likes wet carpet. Mistake number four, still sticking with the theme of the carpeting. This was when I was actually carpeting the, the two rear side panels and um, that go to the, the back of the van. And this is where you've got the access holes for the uh, your rear light clusters in the Transit Custom. A couple of mistakes I made. The first one was I fully carpeted over these when I was doing my, my lining. 
The first challenge I had was one of my rear lights bulbs had actually blown. I then thought, right, I'm going to need to get access to these and I'd carpeted over them. So that wasn't cool. The second mistake then was I thought, well, what I'll do, I'll, I'll cover these up. I created some ply panels and put some four way stretch carpet over those and attached those on just with a bit of Velcro. After I did that, I posted a quick shorts video on it, if you've seen that. And I had a comment back saying it can be quite dangerous to cover these up because when you slam the rear doors or you close the doors, that creates a vacuum. And there's been reports of people's windows popping out if you've got windows fit into the van because it creates that pressure and they can pop. Not ideal. What I've decided to do now is fit some vents into that space so we can still get the airflow and no windows are going to pop out. There is also a company I've come across that um, manufactures these vents um, and we're going to get some of those. I'm going to fit those on the channel as well. Number five then was related to furniture in the van. I purchased some MDF flat pack furniture and like most of the furniture that you can get it comes supplied with a, a flat back so you can then scribe the, the furniture to directly fit into the van. The mistake I made was with my amazing scribing tool which was a piece of cardboard with a pencil inside and this um, didn't give me the best and closest possible finish to the actual furniture versus the, the profile of the van. So what I was left with was a small little gap in between my furniture and actually fitting to, to the back of the van. Not a massive challenge. I would like to try and get it a little bit more accurate in the future. Maybe try and invest in a proper scribing tool or maybe do it a little bit better than I did with even cardboard and, and the pencil. Item number six on my my error list. This was quite a big one actually with the electrics kit that we got supplied um, by Wired Campers. So we went for a kit that just had a normal split charge relay and that was just because we didn't fully check whether or not the year of our van actually had a smart alternator. So initially I wired everything up with the standard split charge relay, came to test that in the actual van itself and we realised that the leisure battery wasn't getting a charge, the voltage wasn't wasn't going up and that's because we needed um, to have a DC to, to DC charger. So in the end we ended up replacing and swapping that out with a CTEC DC. D250SE so that is specifically designed to work with vans that have a smart alternator that is working absolutely perfectly now as well. Mistake number seven then again related to the electrics but this was just a, a slight error in terms of where I was grounding my 240 volts. Initially when I grounded the, the consumer unit I grounded that back to my common bus bar, which was my common earth, which then ran to the actual um, chassis of the van itself. So I did get my electrics checked out um, before um, it was fully finished or when it was finished, just to make sure everything was OK. What I was advised was that it would be better to take the earth directly from the consumer unit for the 240 to the chassis of, of the van. Um, we were advised better to route that back to the, the common earth on the chassis of the van as opposed to the, the bus bar that we had in place. Mistake number eight and this relates to when we had the, the fridge installed. So if you watch the video that I produced on the actual install of our electrics, I had pre-wired some of the electrics back through the units in anticipation of the, the fitting of, of different appliances as well. And when I was doing that, I was checking different um, models and different variations of, of fridge. There was a particular wire gorge that I chose then specific to the fridge model that I was going to get. Unfortunately, then I, I changed our, our mind in terms of the uh, the fridge that we were going to get and the unit I went for actually had a higher rating gauge on, on the wiring itself. So in the end, I had to go for um, 20 gauge and um, 12 volt wire, whereas the pre-wired was only 14. So I think the key thing there is always check your wiring, always check that the gauge related to the appliance that you're going to fit. The last thing you want is melting wires in your camper van. Item number nine, and this was when I was coming to fit the, the water pump that attaches directly to the micro switch tap that gives us the, the cold water feed into the actual van and our SMEV 
9222 unit. When I purchased this as a kit, it came with the, the water pump and also the, um, the water bottles itself for waste and also for the clean water supply. When that came though, the actual water pump itself wouldn't fit through the aperture of the actual uh, water bottles. A little bit of a mistake really on the supplier, I guess, because they supplied the water pump that wouldn't actually fit in the bottles. I had to get a replacement item um, directly for that. Luckily the, the manufacturer or the supplier of, of those was happy to replace it and sort of acknowledged it was a bit of a mistake. I guess it's always a, a case of double check your component, double check the aperture of your waste water bottles. Tenth mistake that, that I made, this came with the, the final bit of my installation which is where I was installing an awning rail on, onto the actual side of, of the van and what I found is that the awning rail I got came in three separate sections so I had to cut these down to fit for the actual size of the van and when I was coming to actually do the um, install I had to sort of pre-drill some holes through the awning rail and also then um, screwing directly into into the metalwork of the van. The one error that I made was the screw that was right near the front of the van when I was actually trying to drill through the metalwork, that was hitting something a little bit more solid and I just had to move that, that screw hole slightly further back towards the bodywork of the van so I could actually make sure I screwed directly into the, the thinner metalwork of the van. Thanks for watching the, the top 10 list. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any more content from Ford Transit Custom Camper Conversion.